Hello, in this video we are going to continue to talk about how to effectively use paragraphs. In a previous video we talked about how to write introductory paragraphs. This video is going to focus on body paragraphs. To review, we've already talked about the ways in which a longer essay mirrors the structure of a body paragraph. A body paragraph begins with a clear topic sentence, then includes supporting details in the middle, followed by a concluding or transition sentence. A paper does something similar. It begins with an introduction, then includes body paragraphs that help to support that introduction or explain the thesis of that introduction, and then finally ends in a conclusion that summarizes and wraps up the ideas. Let's take a look at some examples of body paragraphs. We already know that a body paragraph must have one clear main idea. That main idea is stated in the topic sentence. But a body paragraph can be supported by many things. For example, you might include supporting details that are anecdotes or stories. You might include descriptions of someone or something. You might include specific examples or illustrations in order to demonstrate a point. Or perhaps you'd use expert opinion or analysis. This would be the ideas of someone who is well known or someone who has credentials in a particular area. For example, if you were writing about healthcare or the coronavirus, you might quote the expert opinion of a doctor or a scientist. You may include facts in your body paragraph. These are pieces of information that people generally agree to be true. Uh, you can include reflections, that's your own ideas or analysis of other examples, facts, or opinions. And you might include statistics, which are numbers or percentages that represent data. In addition to traditional body paragraphs, your essay may also include what are called transition paragraphs. Unlike body paragraphs, which have a clear topic sentence that connects to the main idea of the paper or um, helps to support the thesis of the paper, transition paragraphs really link one body paragraph to the next. You can think of these working almost the way that the transition sentence does. Their job is to illustrate the relationship between one set of ideas to another. And so these transition paragraphs, which are also called bridge paragraphs, help to make connections, help summarize the previous ideas, and make and prepare the reader for the ideas that are about to come. Transition paragraphs are especially useful as you begin to write longer and longer essays. Remember that as we are writing our body paragraphs, we want to use transition words both within the paragraphs themselves and between the paragraphs. Some of the examples of transition words that we've talked about already are order of importance words and illustrative words. Order of importance words can be used to introduce body paragraphs, or they can be used to introduce major supporting details inside of a body paragraph. Some examples of order of importance words are first, second, next, then, finally, and in conclusion. We've also previously talked about illustrative words, which are not pictured on the screen. Illustrative words help to prepare the reader for examples. Some, ex some examples of illustrative words are things like, for example, an example is, to illustrate, an illustration is, specifically or particularly. There are other kinds of transition words as well, and what they all do is demonstrate relationships between one set of ideas to another set of ideas. For instance, the word further and also suggests that a similar idea that is moving in the same direction is about to come. The words because and therefore both show cause and effect. And the words likewise and similarly both show comparison. So we use these kinds of transition words when that's the relationship we want to emphasize between two ideas. There are other kinds of transition words and other kinds of relationships in reading and writing. A common one that you'll use is cause and effect. Um, let's take a look at uh, an example of a cause and effect paragraph. The events of July 10th make me refer to it as my worst day ever. That morning, I rushed to catch the train. One of my shoes fell off. When I turned around to pick it up, I accidentally hit a man with my heavy backpack. Because of the sudden impact, he stumbled and got stuck in the doors of the train as they closed. Everyone in the train car stared as I ran to help him, but he managed to pull himself free, slip, spilling his entire cup of coffee on me in the process. Due to my clumsiness, it was too late to go home and change. As a result, 
I had to go to class with my coffee stained clothes. In this case, the three highlighted words, because, due to, and as a result, all show that one thing happened, and then because that one thing happened, something else happened. So it's a cause and effect relationship. Another form of, um, another form of, of relationship in reading and writing is what we call the compare and contrast model. And that's the model that we looked at more uh, closely last week. Here's an example of a compare and contrast paragraph. My cousins are moving and have offered to sell me one of their vehicles. One is a car and the other is a truck. There are two ways the vehicles are similar. They both provide reliable transportation. Also, they are about the same price. On the other hand, the truck can haul large loads while the car can't. The other difference is fuel mileage. The car gets about 30 miles per gallon. Conversely, the truck gets only about 17 miles per gallon. I have a week to make up my decision. In this paragraph, we have a clear topic sentence. The topic sentence is, these two vehicles are similar. Um, <clears throat> and the words both and also set us up for a comparison kind of relationship. Both is certainly a comparison, and then the word also suggests that another detail moving in the same direction is about to come. Um, and because the preceding detail was a comparative detail, we can expect that the detail beginning with the transition word also will be the same. The, tra the transition words, on the other hand, and conversely, both show contrast or oppositeness. And so this writer is using compare and contrast transition words in order to organize their ideas. Good writers will use a variety of relationships in their writing. You ultimately, for some papers, you will focus on one form of writing. For instance, if you are assigned to write a compare and contrast paper, you are going to probably have more compare and contrast signal words than you are other signal words, but it doesn't mean that you won't use illustrative words. And it doesn't mean that you won't use compare and contrast, I'm sorry, that you won't use um, cause and effect words. As you get more comfortable with writing, you'll find that you use these transitions more fluently um, and you use many of them in your compositions. In the next video, we're going to talk about conclusions.